Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. This is Mike. Tonight I would like to show you a little bit more of my music collection. And I would like to focus on my favorite jazz artist, favorite jazz guitarist, Mr. John Abercrombie. And beginning with this record, Characters, which was released in 1978, actually recorded in uh, November of 1977. And uh, this is not his first record, but this is where... This is where I discovered John Abercrombie. Uh, I had no idea who this man was, never heard of him before, and I saw this this artwork staring at me in the record shop, and it just kind of pulled me forward. And I think that's happened to a lot of people. I know I bought many records because I like the covers, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so I turned around and looked at the guy's face. That's how John looked back in 1978, and. Uh, this is a solo record by John. He plays, well, he wrote all the songs, and he also plays acoustic and electric guitar and electric mandolin. And this is one of the most beautiful, meditative, and emotional records that I have ever heard. And I, I love it. I've played it so many times over the years. And I have to say it's gotten me through a lot of very rough moments. And... Uh, I just can't I just can't say enough about it uh, probably sound like I'm babbling like a fool but uh, anyway this is where I've discovered Mr. Abercrombie and everything else I have here on vinyl is uh, more or less in chronological order I don't have a complete collection of what he has on record and CD but I do have quite a bit his discography is uh, very extensive and there are a lot of things I haven't found yet so anyway in 19 well John uh, was, Let's see, he went to the Berklee College of Music in Boston. He did a lot of work with several artists and did a lot of touring. And finally, in 1975, he made his first solo record, which is called Timeless, along with Jan Hammer on organ synthesizer and piano and Jack DeJohnette on drums. And this has got a little bit of water damage, so we'll just pretend we didn't see that. <clears throat> anyway, another beautiful record. Here's John on the back. Okay. Next we have, from the year 1976, we have Sargasso Sea with uh, Ralph Towner. I think he had two two different records that he, that he did with uh, Ralph Towner. And, all right. Once again, John is on acoustic. No, this is electric and acoustic guitar. Uh, Ralph Towner. Uh, let's see. What is he on? String? Can't read the piano. Uh, classical guitar. Oh, yeah. 12 string, 12, 12 string and classical guitar. Go a little faster here. Next is uh, Gateway. Also from 1976. This is John along with Dave Holland. And again, Jack DeJohnette on drums. Next, he was uh, with Jack DeJohnette, his group called Directions. This is un called Untitled. Also from 1976. And going into 1977, again with Jack DeJohnette, New, direct New Directions. He did, um, Let's see. Well, just directions. This is called this is called New Rags, which is interesting. Then we have Gateway Two, also from 1970. Well, characters came after that, and then we have uh, in 1978 we have Gateway Two, again with Dave Holland and Jack D. Jeanette. Next up we have. Um, Jack DeJohnette, New Directions. Also with uh, Lester Bowie on trumpet and Eddie Gomez on bass. Okay. And then we get up to 1979. This is the, probably my second favorite of John's records. This is Arcade. Beautiful cover there. Now this is where I started to... I started listening to John's guitar licks and I, I found myself thinking that if if teardrops could make a sound they would sound like the some of the guitar licks from John Abercrombie just uh it's his guitar sounds like it's just weeping you know it's just I don't know I guess I'm babbling again but uh beautiful record next up is the Abercrombie Quartet 
and self-named. Let's see, the quartet has, uh, let's see, Richard Bayrock on piano, George Mraz on bass, Peter Donald on drums. Okay. Next up is the quartet, back with another record called M. And uh, same, um, same personnel. Next up, his second um, cooperation with Ralph Towner. And this is called, let's see, what is this called? Yeah. Five years later. Sorry, my eyes are so bad I can't see the printing on the record. Five years later. Next up is uh, Drumstrum. This is from... 1984 so and five years later it's from 1982 so yeah next up is uh, solar with John Schofield this is from 1984 and I was this is the only one that I also have on CD this was reissued in 2003 uh, on, a, on a different label so it has a different date, but it's actually the same record. Okay, so next up is uh, Night from the year 1984. This has, let's see, John on guitar, Jan Hammer again, keyboards, Jack DeJarnett on drums, and Mike Brecker on tenor saxophone. And next we have um, Getting There. I love that cover. That is beautiful. Nice artwork on the back as well. And this is from the year 1988. And this features, um, let's see. Okay, now on this one, John does electric and acoustic guitars and guitar synthesizer. And we have Mark Johnson on bass, Peter Erskine on drums, and a guest appearance by Michael Brecker once again on tenor saxophone. Then we have, the last thing I have on vinyl is um, this uh, trio simply called John Abercrombie, Mark Johnson, Peter Erskine. That's the name of the record. And this is a live album recorded live in 1988 at the Night Stage in Boston. And I like this record a lot. What's interesting about this is it has this wild, insane version of one of my favorite standards, which is Stella by Starlight. The theme music from the classic ghost story, The Uninvited, back in 1944, which became a standard um, a year later when someone wrote lyrics to it. And everybody uh, recorded it either as a vocal, I think the first was Frank Sinatra, uh, vocal or instrumental, uh, all, all down through the years. So John and his group did just this crazy version of Stella by Starlight. I've never heard anything like it, but it's just really incredible. So that's uh, the end of my vinyl collection. Then I've, I already showed you the uh, Solar CD. And then I have, um, let's see, it's called Current Events. This is John, once again, doing the guitar synthesizer and the guitar. Mark Johnson on bass, Peter Erskine on drums. And this is from, let's see. Yeah, this is from... Yeah, think Mike, 1986. Okay. Then we have um, while we're young, John Abercrombie, Dan Wall, Adam Nussbaum, and this is from let's see, 1993. So you can see there are a lot of gaps in what I have here. This is uh, November. It's a nice black and white cover. Okay. Then we go up to, uh, now most of these are on the ECM label. Several of them are not. This is on the Steeple Chase label, which is something I don't know much about. This is uh, Nosmo King, John Abercrombie, and Andy Laverne. Nosmo King. Next up we have um, Trio. No, no, the John Abercrombie Trio, sorry. The album is called Speak of the Devil with Dan Wall. And Adam Nussbaum. 
And then we have another uh, product from Gateway. This is uh, called In the Moment. And it was, let's see, Gateway In the Moment, uh, 1986, with Dave Holland, Jack DeJohnette, one of his most prolific uh, collaborators. Then we have Open Land from, let's see, 1999. This has Mark Feldman, Kenny Wheeler, Joe Lovano, Dan Wall, Adam Nussbaum. Then we have this, unfortunately, cracked cover on The Hudson Project, where he worked with, um, let's see, who is it? Peter Erskine, Bob Mincer, and John Patitucci. That, that CD uh, came broken in the mail, so it was kind of unfortunate. Here's an interesting little thing called Three Guitars, where it's just uh, three guitar players interweaving with each other. It has uh, Larry Coriel, Bobby Assad, and John, all on acoustic guitars. Right? Really interesting. And I'm going to down to the last few here. This is the John Abercrombie Quartet called Within a Song. And let's see, this one is from 2012. Then we have uh, 39 Steps. This is from 2013. This is interesting because they, they uh, the, the guys in the group, John with, along with Mark Copeland, Drew Gress, and Joey Barron, uh, they all wrote some of the songs. And they do, they're inspired partly by some of the films that are Alfred, of Alfred Hitchcock. For example, John wrote the first song, it's called Vertigo. Then there's also um, Spellbound and uh, Shadow of a Doubt and 39 Steps, all Hitchcock films, which inspired them to uh, write and, and play those songs. And finally, they, they do a version of the old standard Melancholy Baby, which is a nice way to end the record. Okay, and finally, my most recent, uh, from 2017, this is uh, the John Abercrombie Quartet, Up and Coming. This features Mark Copeland, Drew Gress, and Joey Barron. And this is the last thing that I have. He had one more CD that came out in 2018, the name of which escapes me. Uh, I do not have it. There are a whole bunch of things from John that I don't have. I um, didn't find out that John died in 2017 until two years later. I, I never really followed his life. I didn't know of any website or anything like that. So I didn't know what was going on with him. And I think I saw something on Facebook. I discovered that there was a John Abercrombie Facebook page and it said that he passed away in 2017. I was really, really upset about that. I'm so sorry to uh, not have him in the world anymore, but I'm very happy that he has so much music that we can all enjoy. And my goal in life now is to find as many of his, uh, I'll probably just buy more CDs now, but as, as, as much of his music as I can possibly find. And I would love to find a copy of characters on CD, but I, I don't think it's ever been put on CD, but I, that's kind of a goal. Keep, I keep searching, see if there's something in Europe or someplace like that, that has, has it on CD. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any interest in John Abercrombie and uh, what your favorite record is. I'd love to hear. All right. Thanks for watching folks. Comments are welcome.